Hey, future respiratory therapists. So we're going to talk about ARDS for a little bit, and we're specifically going to talk about how we manage ARDS. So Barry wants to know how to better manage ARDS. Farhan wants to know more about driving pressure, peak inspiratory pressure, PEEP, things like that. So this is going to kind of be all-inclusive to, to address both of those questions. And really what I want to talk to you about is when we're talking about ARDS, you got to understand that 20 years ago, we're in 2019, back in the late 1990s, there was a big study done, it included something like 861 patients or something. It was, it was, it was approved for 1,000 patients, but they stopped at 861 because the evidence was so overwhelmingly positive that they said, we can stop here. And that is known as the ARDSNET protocol. Now, if you want to know more about the ARDSNET protocol and, and understanding exactly what that standard says about managing ARDS on a mechanical ventilator, then just simply Google ARDSNET protocol. It'll pull up. It's got their own web page, and the protocol is right there visible for everybody. So if you want to see that, go ahead and do it. I'm going to reference a couple of articles today um, that I've, that I've uh, been following and... I, this is the purpose of this channel is not to be a research library, so I don't put the links or anything to them. But you can simply Google all of this stuff. Just go on Google ArsNet protocol, Google driving pressure and ARDS, Google the future of driving pressure, Google all of that stuff, and you'll find all this data that I'm going to kind of talk to you about today. Okay, now this channel, as we know, is geared towards future respiratory therapists. Now this topic is typically probably a little above most respiratory therapy students, but it doesn't have to be, and it definitely shouldn't be, um, just because the MBRC hasn't begun testing over driving pressure doesn't mean that driving pressure isn't something that you can become familiar with as you move through your studies and become a practicing respiratory therapist. If you're already a practicing respiratory therapist, driving pressure is something that you're going to want to start thinking about. Because there's data coming out that's supporting its outcomes when we follow it. Now, typically, we just monitor peak inspiratory pressure, plateau pressure, and mean airway pressure. Nowhere in documentation do we document driving pressure. So the first thing we need to do is what is driving pressure? Driving pressure is the difference between plateau and peep. So you take your plateau pressure, you minus your peep. And that gives you a driving pressure. Now, you're going to see, i got some stuff on the board behind me that we're going to talk about here in just a second. You're going to see the effects of monitoring driving pressure and what it can do for your ARDS patients. Okay. Now, going back to the ARDSNET protocol, you need, to, you need to have a little bit of basic of understanding of what that protocol established. And what it did was it was kind of the first study of its time that said, hey, guys, our tidal volumes we're using are too high. So we need, to, we need to lower our tidal volume. So the focus of the ARSNET protocol in managing ARDS was on higher PEEP levels and lower tidal volumes. Now, when I say lower tidal volumes, I'm talking about tidal volumes in a range of 6 to 8 mLs per kilo all the way down to 4 mLs per kilo. And tidal volume adjustment was based on a monitoring of plateau pressure. So if you had a PEEP of 10 and you had a pl plateau pressure you know, of 35, then you were to decrease your tidal volume by 1 mL per kilo until you got your plateau pressures back down underneath 30 centimeters of water pressure. That was what the focus of that study came out. So it was really two big things that came out of it. PEEP and plateau pressure using smaller tidal volumes to monitor and to gauge and to adjust, I guess, to keep that plateau pressure within range. And that's pretty much been the gold standard for tw almost 20 years now since it was published in, in 2000. It started in the late 90s, it finished and was published in 2000. Okay, That's where we are now. That's actually kind of what drove the whole decreasing tidal volume down to where we are now to where Nobody really talks about ARDS anymore when they talk about 6 to 8 mLs per kilo. They talk about just mechanical ventilation, 6 to 8 mLs per kilo. That's what we use. But that all originated with the study that came out of the, the ARSNET protocol. So let's talk just a little bit about 
what they've done since then because this is going to help you understand better management of your ARDS patient. So the the conductors of the Arginet, the original Arginet study came back and they said, "You know what? Now that this has been going on now for, you know, a decade plus, let's look back at the numbers and let's see if we can figure out if there's anything it's if we can identify a differentiating factor other than plateau pressure, smaller tidal volumes, higher peeps. And so what they did was they took uh, roughly 3,500 ARDS cases that were utilized under the ARSNET protocol, and they shuffled them up in a bunch of different ways. And here's what they found. Now remember, the ARSNET protocol is PEEP-focused, and plateau pressure focused using smaller tidal volumes. So peak focused and plateau pressure focused. So here's, here's, here's what they found. They reshuffled, 30, like I said, 3,500 cases. And they reshuffled them and looked at the values. And they compared it to mortality. So the increased risk of mortality for the patient. So the first thing they looked at was... They focused on PEEP settings. So they reshuffled all of the cases and they matched up PEEPs into five different categories. Now when you shuffled this up, the PEEP was set standard and what they did was compared it to how did these patients present with their plateau pressures. And what they found was that as PEEP was set standard with higher plateau pressures, they found a higher mortality rate associated with this. Okay, so PEEP standard. So this right here tells you that PEEP's not the answer because all the PEEPs were the same, but if plateau pressures were higher, you had a higher level of mortality. So PEEP is not the answer. They then looked at plateau pressures. So they, they reshuffled everything and they put standardized all the plateau pressures evenly and they said where and what does this look like when we when we reshuffle these into five categories and we put our peeps alike with like plateaus what happens to mortality well what they found was is that mortality could be high but would decrease also so here you have a rising levels of peep but a standard plateau so here, you also couldn't only assume that monitoring plateau pressures is what results to better outcomes. Because if that was the case, then all of these would have an equal increased risk for mortality. But that's not what happened. So the plateau stayed the same as, the peep, as this difference was wider. They had a higher mortality rate as the peeps increased incrementally. As they looked at these studies, mortality went down. So then they reshuffled it and they said, let's look at driving pressure. So what they did was they reshuffled it to match all these peeps with these plateaus. And what they found happened with the increased risk for mortality looked like this. It was the same across the board. It was low, it, 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 it basically normalized from this increasing mortality rate as plateau pressures go up and this, and this higher mortality rate with set plateau pressure. So remember, they're looking for plateau pressures less than 30. They put this in here. You have a plateau pressure of 30, but you have a low peak. Everybody seems like we're doing good, right? Everything's good, but you had a higher mortality rate. Then when they standardized plateau to peep, focusing on driving pressure being the difference from plateau to peep, they found a standardized mortality rate. Now, what does this mean to us? This simply means that we got to start talking about driving pressure. You at least need to start monitoring it and knowing what it is and understanding that it's becoming a topic of discussion. Now, this that I just illustrated to you can all be seen on the table. If you'll search for driving pressure, ARDS, you'll find the research, the research for it. And you can look at this study and read it yourself. It's just a hypothesis at this time. It's just 
noticing something that might be worth looking into further, which is where we are today. We've got to further look into driving pressure and studies focused on the outcomes associated with specifically driving pressure. As opposed to what we've been traditionally doing, which is PEEP and plateau monitoring. And both of these show that PEEP is not the answer. Plateau is not the answer. Because you can have a good plateau and still have a high mortality. You can have good PEEP and have a high mortality. So it's not either of those individually. It's actually a combination and it's the only when they re redid it and looked at driving pressure and kept it the same did they find a linear move in mortality without an increase or a decrease based off of driving pressure. This is very interesting to me because we don't talk about driving pressure in school in the terms of this. We don't talk about plateau minus peak. If I was to ask 100 respiratory therapy students what is driving pressure, I bet 99 of them couldn't answer it. And it's okay because you shouldn't because we haven't really talked about it much. Practicing respiratory therapists, what's driving pressure? They won't be able to answer it. Not all of them. 99 out of 100 probably couldn't answer it. And it's okay because it's never been a focus. But this is exciting because this is where the field of respiratory therapy is going, specifically in the management of ARDS. Now, what we need is studies. And there's some that, I, from what I understand, there's studies underway that are looking at driving pressure. So starting with a max peep to keep a minimal driving pressure. And when you talk about driving pressure, they say that the, these outcomes were kept at a driving pressure less than 15 centimeters of water pressure. Some say 14 to 16, but basically 15 centimeters of water pressure. So the difference between peep and plateau should be 15 centimeters of water pressure. That's your driving pressure. And that, at least from this, has shown this thought that perhaps that's the key to, to, to reducing risks of mortality with ARDS. Okay? Now, these studies that are underway are monitoring lots of stuff. you got them looking at things such as um, incremental PEEP studies where they're going plateau pressure is 30. What's my max PEEP that can get my plateau pressure at 30? And then work backwards from that PEEP. So incrementally, incrementally decreasing PEEP taking ABGs, documenting PEEP, plateau, and driving pressure in conjunction with those ABGs to identify the best PF ratio at the best PEEP with the standardized driving pressure. And hopefully those studies come out and show us that that's maybe the key that even increases survival rates or decreases mortality rates of ARDS even further than what they were. The ARSNET protocol did a phenomenal job because ARDS, when I came out of school, had a, had a survival rate or a mortality rate of 50%. You're basically looking at, if you have two patients with ARDS, one's living and one's not. We reduce that down from the ARSNET protocol. Now, if we can reduce it down further, then we're doing our job and our service to the sick people of our community and helping them get over illnesses and leave the hospital and go home and hopefully live the rest of our life at a high quality. And that's really what it comes down to. So to answer your question, Barry, how do I manage ARDS? You need to research ARDSnet protocol and you will find it and it will make perfect sense to you. The focus is peak, plateau, and tidal volume. Farhan, when it comes to driving pressure, you need to understand it's the difference between plateau and peak. That's what it is. And it is shown at least from the hypothesis level, that it has positive outcomes in reducing mortality. Okay? So, hey, guys, I hope this helps. Um, I like doing stuff like this. I like looking up and, 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 and studying to put, push us outside of our comfort zone where everybody says, talk about peak pressure, plateau pressure, error resistance, compliance, all the stuff that we learned in school. But let's talk about stuff that we haven't learned in school. Let's talk about the stuff that people five, six, seven, eight, nine years are going to be learning about in school because that's what's driving us into the future. Best wishes, guys.